Typically, when your pieces are more centralized, your pieces optically seem more primed to attack the enemy camp, and you're one move away from reaching what looks to be full coordination of all of your majors. The tactics should be okay for you, but what can I say? Chess is complicated, and it was exactly that in round five at the FideChess.com Grand Swiss for Zahar Epimenko and Sanyan Sigurjev. That's exactly what happened in this position here. White has seemingly everything a chessboard needs. Very, very active knights, pieces that are primed on the king side, looking like they have potential threats. And at some point here, we are a move away from tripling our major pieces along the E-file for a borderline Al Johan's gun. Hard to not look at White's position and feel pretty pleased about the setup. But believe it or not, it's completing exactly that optically pleasing final destination that costs White the game here. When Efimenko played the move Rook to E1, and suddenly he can resign after the brilliant, surprising, call it sassy retreat of the knight from E5 to C6. A move that I gave two exclamation points, and I'm about to break down for you why. But when you look at this position here, just to be clear, there are other moves where white's okay. So it's really hard to say, well, this was just a good position for black anyway, and that's why white blundered. And the reason that's important is because as a professional chess coach trainer that I have been in many lifetimes and here with you all, normally you say that blunders are made when something is off in your position. You've been outplayed. If you're lying to yourself and not telling yourself that you already are worse or at the very least don't understand something, if you're not being honest with yourself and thinking that you just blundered all the time in winning positions, then you're probably not progressing like you should. You should typically be honest with yourself that when you make a mistake, there was something about the position that you had already lost the thread on, so to speak. But in this position, that really wasn't the case. Like I said, chess is a messy game. White can do some other things here. In fact, the main move I analyzed was the move knight to e7 to try to use those active pieces right away to cut off the e-file and essentially make a transition into what probably is a roughly equal opposite colored bishop ending. Now, because white's pieces obviously get themselves in huge trouble after this brilliant retreat by black, it's clear that something went wrong. And what I'd like to break down is what were the hidden features that were potentially very dangerous about white's position that didn't first meet the eye. When you look at these pieces along the fifth rank, they're, they're immediate targets for the black queen. Also, the only piece that's holding it together is the knight on d4. While it was safe just a move ago, a surprising retreat, Grandmaster Robert Hess and I talk about this in our commentary all the time, that can be missed even by strong Grandmasters because it's just not a move you consider when you're completing your pressure and they're backing out of your way, yet suddenly here, all of White's pieces are on pre. The main point here is that there's two threats. Bishop takes f5 to win the knight, which only occurred because we retreated the knight from e5 clearing the queen. And then knight takes d4, which is only a threat because the move of the knight going back to the square c6. So this retreating move has suddenly exposed a ton of issues. And there's a third key tactic that didn't really meet my eye at first when I saw the position and it took some analysis to really realize why the position was so bad. When your pieces are under attack, often you're looking for tempo moves to get out of it, forcing trades, checks, captures if you can. But the only real way to get rid of one of these central pieces and make a capture to try to give yourself some room to breathe is to play the move knight takes c6. The problem is that this move allows bishop takes c6 and suddenly the third problem in white's position comes to light, that this g2 pawn is a serious problem. It's called checkmate. In this situation, I analyzed every move by myself and then with the engine, don't worry, double checked. And sure enough, white is just completely lost here. Moves like rook takes e8 just allow us to come into the center with more tempi. We see all the pieces on pre via the bishop and the knight. Moves like knight to g3 are just too slow. Not only is the bishop hanging, but so is the knight. Um, moves like queen to d3, a move that just tries to get the queen off, just runs into the trade. And so suddenly we're in a position where white actually has no way to deal with all the threats. He did his best with the move h4 to guard the bishop, pointing out that if you take on d4, at the very least I can, I can take back with my knight, and in this position my bishop is now defended. Funnily enough, black actually bought that, that bluff because there was a brilliant move after this combination, f5. Suddenly a pawn comes in and the rook has to leave the fourth rank or the e-file. Both will lose material. The most likely forcing line was something like trade, trade. And if you try to block the e-file, here comes f4. The bishop is pinned. If you try to move the queen, I trade on e1 and win the knight. Um, and even a trade like this doesn't amount to anything because at the end of the line, 
Black has things like King F7 and everything is just fine. So the tactics, sure enough, work out perfectly for Black. So he could have just taken on D4 with the knight. Uh, Sigurjov played the move F6, which also works, and then G6, which always amazing when you start a combination by a retreating move followed by two subtle pawn advances and white's more active pieces in the center were just helpless bystanders to the whole process white couldn't really do anything and again you can see i'm like a giddy little schoolgirl here excited about the position because it, it really was a very very shocking one again it wasn't really covered a lot by our broadcast team on the island yet full of just uh, amazing and sort of obscure tactics in the sense that white optically should be doing okay yet somehow all the pieces are on the wrong squares fascinating stuff so after f6 and g6 white tried to bail out with bishop h6 but it was nothing but a trade bishop takes and then black finally wins the piece due to the fact that this knight is not really pinned when at the end of the line the key tactic i highlighted at the beginning comes into play with a pin on the g2 pawn white can uh, just resign he plays one more move to allow knight takes f3 Queen takes, loses a rook. Pawn takes, loses the queen. And if a Menko threw in the towel. So this was my favorite game from round five that didn't quite get the attention it deserved from the broadcast team. But let's shout out that team because we do love them so much. International Master Anna Rudolph and Grandmaster Danny King are bringing you the coverage, helping us all figure out just who will challenge Magnus Carlsen for the throne. Make sure you're checking out the show today. Magnus Carlsen gave an interview on the live broadcast. So exciting stuff. Thanks for tuning in and checking out this entire video playlist on YouTube uh, or wherever else you may be watching it. And uh, we'll see you around on chess.com.